In the very first video in this section, I started you out with the graph of a rational function to try to make the argument that these things are kind of crazy looking and they can be kind of challenging to graph. And in the three or four videos since then, we've really learned all the important features that we want to make sure that a graph of a rational function represents. So our goal is to start out with the equation of a rational function and transform that into the graph of a rational function. What I want to do in this video is I want to work backwards. I want to start you out with the graph of a rational function and have you tell me the equation of the rational function. So loosely speaking, I want you to go from here to this red box. However, what you'll see is, is the answer is not that red box. This graph is not the same as this equation, although I think it's pretty close if I remember right. But let's figure out what the equation of the rational function graphed here actually is, and then we'll be done with this section. A couple of comments before I really get going. This is gonna be very similar to what we did with polynomials where we worked backwards. Where technically you're not given enough information to figure out what polynomial is graphed, you have to also be told some information about the degree of the polynomial. Since now we're talking about rational functions, you have to be told about the degree of the polynomial in the numerator and the degree of the polynomial in the denominator. In this case, they're both three. Now let's look at our graph and identify all of the key characteristics. Conveniently, the y-intercept is labeled for us here at 0, negative 10. So that'll be really useful. We also have some x-intercepts labeled. It looks like this one is at negative 5, and this one appears to be at positive 8. Also, by looking at the behavior of the graph at this point, you might notice that the graph bounces off here but goes straight through here. So the multiplicity of this root must be even, and the multiplicity of this root must be the number 1. But what even number do we have over here? Is it two or four or six or eight? Well, that gets up here to the fact that the degree of the numerator is three, so the multiplicity of this root can't be more than two because the degree of the numerator is only three. So if this is more than two, this multiplicity plus this multiplicity would exceed this three. We got the y-intercept, we got the x-intercepts. What does that leave? Well, two pieces of information. It leaves the end behavior. In this case, it looks like we have a horizontal asymptote. It can be a little bit tough to gauge the horizontal asymptote just by looking at the graph, but it looks like in this case, our horizontal asymptote is at y equals negative four. And then we also have some vertical asymptotes. Those can also be hard to ballpark from the graph. Whenever we're doing these problems where you work backwards, you can always assume that these vertical asymptotes fall at whole numbers. So maybe you'd guess that this vertical asymptote is at negative four, and this vertical asymptote appears to be at positive five. You may recall that the multiplicity of the vertical asymptotes is important. By looking at the graph, we can see that for this vertical asymptote, the graph goes in the same direction on both sides of it, down in this case. But for this vertical asymptote, it goes in opposite directions. In one direction, it goes down, and on the other side, it goes up. What that means is that this vertical asymptote has even multiplicity, and this vertical asymptote has odd multiplicity. What even number and what odd number? Well, I wouldn't know, except it tells me that the degree of the denominator is three. So this must be equal to two, and this must be equal to one. The last thing to point out is there aren't any holes pictured. So we're good. We have all the information that we need. Mm, this feels really hard. How am I gonna change this into an equation? Well, the idea is write your rational function in its factored form. Up in the numerator, I know that I have an x plus five the factor that corresponds with this root at negative five, and I have an x minus eight, the factor that corresponds with this root at positive eight. I also know that this factor must be raised to the first power because the multiplicity of this root is one, and this factor at x plus five must be raised to the second power because this root at negative five has multiplicity two. Because there's no holes, there's no other factors up in the numerator, so we can move on to the denominator. In the denominator, we got a vertical asymptote at negative four, so that corresponds with a factor of x plus four, and we got a vertical asymptote at positive five, so that corresponds with a factor of x minus five. We know that those two vertical asymptotes have multiplicity two and one respectively, so these factors have multiplicities two and one respectively. So that's it, that's my answer, almost. Remember with polynomials, there might be a number out in front. If you want, you could say there might be a number out in front of the polynomial on the top and a number out in front of the polynomial on the bottom, but it makes life a little bit easier to just say there might be a number out in front of the entire rational function and just allow that number to be a fraction if it happens to be a fraction. I have to solve for that number. How am I gonna solve for that number? I'm gonna use any other point on the graph. Or if I prefer, I'm gonna use the end behavior. 
Let's first solve by using any other point on the graph. Note that this graph goes through the point 0, negative 10. What that means is that when x equals 0, y must be equal to negative 10. By plugging in 0 and negative 10 into this equation, I can come up with an equation that only has one unknown, the number a, and a bunch of numbers. 5 squared from 0 plus 5, 0 minus 8 to the first power is negative 8, 0 plus 4 is 4, which needs to be squared, and 0 minus 5 is negative 5 raised up to the first power. You can do a little bit of arithmetic here. You might first notice that we have a negative on the top and the bottom, so those cancel. So what's going to be left is going to be a positive number. This 5 and one of these 5's cancel, so I'm left with a 5 up top. And then I can take one of these 4's and cancel with this 8, and that would leave me with a 2 up top and a 4 down in the bottom. What I'm saying is negative 10 must be equal to a times 10 fourths. If I multiply both sides of the equation by 4 tenths to isolate the a, I get that a is equal to negative 4. What I'm saying is my answer is that y is equal to negative 4 times x plus 5 squared times x minus 8 to the first power divided by x plus 4 squared times x minus 5 to the first power. And if you want to write this negative 4 up on the top of the fraction, you can. Or if you want to write it out in front of the fraction, that's totally fine too. It's worth pointing out that we could have determined this negative 4 without ever looking at this y-intercept by noticing that because the numerator and the denominator both have degree 3, we're in what I called case 3 of the n behavior. And case 3 for the n behavior tells us we have a horizontal asymptote at the quotient of the leading coefficients. So the quotient of the leading coefficients must be equal to negative 4. So I have a negative 4 on top and a 1 down on the bottom. The point is we can do all the work on the factors by looking at the x-intercepts, the vertical asymptotes, and a whole if it exists. Make sure you incorporate the correct multiplicities for each of those different factors. But then don't forget, there could be a number out in front, so always put like the letter A out in front. And then solve for that A, either using the y-intercept or using the end behavior. Wow, that's a lot. I think that's the most intense thing we'll do in this entire class. So if you're able to follow that, you should be really proud of yourself.